So today we're going to go ahead with Verbal Judo, which is an incredibly interesting book all around communication and social skills and all of these things. And there's going to be some things coming up that are you know, quite interesting and also quite useful for your everyday interactions, which is kind of the most important thing, at least in my point of view, like being able to use this knowledge every single day is always something amazing. Also because you're not going to forget about it and just because it is then not a waste of time to go through something like that. But uh, we're going to see, you know, we are going to see what it is going to be about. Chapter 7, it's it's very short and I think that we are going to be able to finish up with the whole summary today. But we are going to see the crucible, yes, of the street, the unconscious contemptant, com competent, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, chapter 8. The most powerful word in the English language, which is empathy. To see through the eyes of another, empathy absorbs tension. If you can't emphasize with people you don't understand or you don't stand a chance of getting them to listen to you, if you can't emphasize with people you don't stand a chance of getting them to listen to you, only after emphasizing can you help them see the consequences of what they are doing or what they are about to do. And yeah, this is definitely the case and empathy is one of the most important things there is to be able to communicate the things that you want to communicate so that these people do what you want them to do. Because if you can see life through their eyes, you can give them reasons for why it is important or why it makes sense to do what you're saying them or telling them to do. If you just say anything or something or, or if you're saying something that you believe in, like, okay, you have to do this because it's going to make me a lot of money. Hmm they probably don't really give a fuck about that. And they probably might even be like, well, oh, if it's like that, then I'm not going to do anything just because it's going to benefit only you. But if you can show them why it is benefiting them by looking through their eyes and or by, you know, having a, a look at life through their eyes, then of course they're going to do something because they see something in it for them, which just really makes sense. Chapter 9. The greatest speech you will live to regret. Strip phrases use them. Like, I appreciate that, but. I understand that, but. Oh yes, combine them. Um, Something that I do want to say is that apparently using but, as I've read in whatever book, in whatever summary, in whatever article, I think it was a book though, Um, is not the best word to use because we know that there is like a turning point or a tipping point. Like, okay, I, I really appreciate what you're doing, but, and then there's going to be something. And we all know that there is going to be something. We all know that there is something coming up that we maybe don't really like to hear and also don't want to hear. So um, maybe not using but might be a good idea. It might be something to think about and something to keep in mind as well. But yeah, four reasons to employ strip phrases. The first reason, they actually make you feel good. The second one, serve as a springboard focus technique. The third, if you can springboard, uh, past the insults and focus on a goal, you have disempowered the other person. And the fourth is you sound good. Two principles for dealing with difficult people. The first one is let the person say what he wants as long as he does what you say. Yes, of course, you know, this, this person can insult you, this person can say whatever. But if in the end this person is doing what you want this person to do, then everything is fine. You know, the problem is if you might be getting into a fight with this person, you know, verbally or, or hopefully, especially not physically, then, you know, chances of them doing what you want them to do are a bit lower, at least at my point of view, you know, by me thinking through such scenarios. And so, I mean, if they are just saying, you know, if they're just talking to you, but they're still doing well, just, you know, cope with the shit, you know, cope with the words, of course, might not be the best relationship, might not be a long-term thing then, you know, if this person is upset. And maybe you once again have to talk to this person using empathy, like, okay, why are you upset? And then, then show them what is in it for them. And then they might not be upset, for example. And the second thing is, the second rule or the second principle for dealing with difficult people is always go for the win-win, which by the way is something that I deeply appreciate the authors saying because I believe in it. I just really believe in it. Like, you know, why do I always have to gain from it? And why does the, the other person always have to gain from whatever we're talking about? You know, what about a win-win? You know, what about achieving something and or achieving a state, achieving a scenario that is benefiting both sides? 
both sides equally, both sides in some way, you know. It just makes sense, and it just makes sense, and it's just making also life, at least in my point of view, a bit easier and, and also more enjoyable for both people. The chapter 10. The only way to interrupt people and still have them love you. And these are amazing words, but it is paraphrased. So, for example, the sword of inseration. Use these to interrupt. Wow. Wait a second. Let me be sure I had, I had, yeah, I heard uh, what he was saying. You are feeling X because of Y. Is that correct? List of 14 beneficial benefits of paraphrasing. Um, yes, if you paraphrase something, you know, if you paraphrase the person, be like, wow, well, okay, so um, you, you're feeling this because of that. Uh, am I right? Does this make sense? Have I understood you correctly? This other person knows that you're listening. This other person knows that you give a fuck about what he or she is saying. And this shows something incredible. Not a lot of people are doing that. And it really tremendously makes sense when you do that. Also, on the other, on the other, on the other hand, to actually make sure that you've understood what the person was saying, you know, which is always going to be good for the conversation. And something that Dale Carnegie, the author of How to Win Friends and Influence People, one of my favorite books, said, just being generously interested in the other person. And you're really doing that by asking this person once again, like, have I understood this correctly? Did you just say this and that? Have I got that right? It just makes sense. It just shows the person that you give a fuck. It just shows the person that this person is of some value, or at least what they're talking about at this point in time. It just makes sense. It's an amazing thing. And it's, it's just, I don't know, like there's also something about making other people feel good about themselves and, and feel good about what they are doing. And of course, you shouldn't be lying and you shouldn't be acting like something. But if it is really interesting and if it is like... Um, I don't know if it is something that you actually give a fuck about, then also show that. A lot of those positive emotions and a lot of these good things, we don't often show them, which is, you know, which is a pity, to be honest. But on the other hand, when it is something negative, when there is something to, to be angry about, of course we're going to show that, for whatever the fuck reason. Chapter 11. Verbal judo versus verbal karate. Gently versus quick, hard, defensive strikes. There is no apology for verbal abuse. You can never take words back. Force options. Your first force option is your presence. Body language, facial expression. You've got to look the part. The verbal is your second option. If the first two do not work, try one of the next four force options. Three, lay hands, come along, what? Lay hands, come along holds from martial arts, lowest level of pain. Four, use of artificial in capac Kitators, stun guns, maze, it is temporarily immobilizing. Five impact tools, nightstick or baton, and the sixth one is deadly force. Is this not really about fighting or isn't it? I don't know. I can't tell, but chapter 12. The five step hard style. Five steps for generating voluntary compliance. The first one is ask, ethical appeal. The second one is set context, reasonable appeal. The third, present options, personal appeal. What is in it for them? Confirm practical appeal, what this person could do. And the fifth, act, determination of appropriate action. Is there anything I can say or do at this time to earn your cooperation? I like to think there is. Repetition shows weakness, flexibility shows strength. Repetition shows weakness. Flexibility shows strength. Chapter 13. The first great communication art, which is representation. Make a list of your most harmful weaknesses. Then name them. Hashtag do this. Somewhere I quote, If you do not know yourself, you lose 100% of the time. If you know yourself, but you do not know the opponent, you will be lucky to win 50% of the time. If you know yourself and you know the opponent, you can win 100% of time. A better way like make a list of your most harmful weaknesses and then name them. Um, I don't know if it is meant in a conversation, if it is meant in a way of, um, you know, if you are quite in a fight with another person, but what it reminds me is something that Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V, some people might know him, said about 8 Miles the movie with Eminem, and I think it was the the end scene or the final scene or something like that, 
where Eminem basically was talking about all the things that that made him weak, all his weaknesses, all his uh, all his shortcomings, all of these things, and he named them for the only reason of you know so that the other person can't name them. If you're just already talking about your weaknesses, if you talk about a name. The things that, that make you feel hurt, the things that are painful for you, then the other person, you know, is, is not having any chance. The person can't say anything. There's nothing else that can hurt you because you've already said that. So what is the other person gonna say? It's at least not gonna be something that's gonna hurt you. You know, a person might be saying something, but you're probably not gonna give a fuck about that. So it really makes sense. It really does. Um, but therefore, you really have to know yourself. You know, you have to know what harming you you really need to be self-aware to, to to be able to pull it off at least in my point of view and of course if you know your opponent pretty well then you can fucking destroy this person chapter 14 the second great communication art which is translation four basic elements of communication the first one is contents the second one is coding uh, the third one is sending and the fourth one is decoding and between sending and decoding sometimes there is also some sort of um how do you call it noise you know whether it is actual noise in terms of you know the wind is blowing or there is a a, you know drilling machine or whatever the fuck it is called in a background or something like that which um, you know makes the person that is receiving the code you know and trying to decode it unable to decode it because it's it's not even um, getting the full code As well as if you just have some software on your PC and you go into the source code and you kind of delete half of it, well, it's not going to work out that well, you know. Maybe the the fucking GUI is fucked, maybe the whole functions are fucked, you know, something is probably going to be not working as it should be. And so it's the same case for noise in communication. On the other hand, you know, if you're coding something into a language, let's just, you know, let's name French. If somebody... If some, some French guy or some French girl is talking to me in French, I can't decode it because I, I just don't know French. If you have trouble communicating with people, it is because you are thinking about yourself instead of them. People rarely say what they mean. Chapter 15, the third grade communication art, which is meditation. No notes taken on chapter 15. Well, chapter 16, what makes this all so difficult? Only 10 to 15% of of your communication is received by what you say. The rest is based on facial expressions, tone, body language, etc. So definitely something to to keep in mind on and yeah, keep 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 an mind on, keep your eye on, um, especially when it comes to tonality. I think it is way too to underrate it. Like if you say something in a in a very specific way, it's gonna have different strength. It's going to have different attributes. It's going to be received completely differently. You know, chapter 17, reading, writing, and rhetoric. Or rhetoric, I'm sorry. Acronym, pay, PAVPO, PAVPO. Perspective, audience, voice, purpose, and organization. Chapter 18, how to diagnose a verbal encounter. PACE, problem, audience, constraints, and ethical presence. Chapter 19, the language of reassurance, underlying principles, empathy absorbs tension. Always use empathy. Empathy is always a nice thing. You know, somebody's mean to you, use empathy and you're probably going to see that this person is fucking hurt. And you're going to feel sorry about this person just through empathy. And by maybe, you know, trying to think, you know, if you're using empathy, you're seeing, you know, you're, you're, you're just seeing the world through their eyes. But then you just have to be a bit smarter and and all just a bit smart and and think about all the reasons why they might be seeing these things or seeing things in this way. And you might come to conclusions like, okay, their parents hate them. Um, they've had a very tough and or rough upbringing or something else, you know, something else that, that your mind can give you. Some, just some other idea, I don't know. And if you go with that, then um, you're probably not going to be angry about this person. You know, you're you're probably going to feel sorry and bad for this person being being so hurt that... I mean, for example, let's take mean people. Why are people mean? You know, if you think about uh, some day or some moment where you have been mean, 
Why have you been mean? Maybe because something was happening in your life. Maybe you've been stressed out. Maybe you've been hungry. Maybe whatever. But then the question is, why am I stressed out? Well, maybe this this person's mother is in a hospital for whatever reason. Could be the case. And then maybe like asking why this person is feeling the way, why this person is so mean to you. You know, you, you could actually get behind the curtain and see what's going on. Uh, chapter 20, how to fight fair. Paraphrase, paraphrase again, refocus on, uh, refocus the other's attention and say what you want to say. Chapter 21, take the giant leaps, listen, empathy, ask, paraphrase and summarize. Five types of questions, fact finding, general which are open-ended, Opinion seeking, direct, which is a yes or no, so closed end, I guess, and leading almost always angers people. <laughs> so don't use them. Leading questions. Chapter 22, applying leaps to your world. There is no notes there. Chapter 23, persuasion for fun and profit. To know and to act are one and the same. The angry man will defeat himself in battles as well as in life. So don't be angry. Have a good life. Lead a good life. Chapter 24. The misunderstood motivator. Motivate by raising expectations. Raise expectations through praise. I mean, which as well as something that... Um, Andrew Carnegie? What was he called? Dave? No. Carnegie, the author of How to Win Friends and Influence People. I just don't remember the first name all of a sudden. But he also said that praising people is fucking important, first of all, and second of all, powerful. Because, you know, I always had to think about this. Not a lot of people are praising you, especially not for little, little things. And I kind of still, up to this day, like to use it. Like, okay, you've really done this in a great way. Like, I, you know, God, I have to say, I appreciate that. Or something similar. Because not a lot of people are saying that. Not a lot of people are that direct and, and tell you that that you know that you're very nice or what the fuck ever. And yeah, just feels good. Let's the other person feel good. And once again, it should be honest. You shouldn't be lying about something. You should not be uh, just overdoing things and kind of make an elephant out of a fly, if you know what I mean. And so on. Chapter twenty five. You can punish without drawing blood. There is no notes as well as in chapter 26, which is taking dancing, I'm sorry, when you might have stumbled. Chapter 27, there is no notes, so I'm going to skip it anyway. And then there's the last one, which is chapter 28, the final chapter, the five truths that fit all. What is true of all cultures? The first one, all people want to be treated with dignity and respect. The second is, all people want to be asked rather than told to do something. The third all people want to be informed as to why they are being asked or ordered to do something. And the fourth out of five, all people want to be given options rather than threats or threats, threats, whatever. And the fifth one is all people want a second chance when they make a mistake. My action step after reading, being more aware when antagonists are trying to upset me and not let myself get upset. The second thing is mental model of the three types of people Nice, difficult, and whims, which I've been covering in the first episode. The, the third is work toward having more empathy to absorb tension, especially with challenging relationships. Then there is related book summaries. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna skip, I'm not gonna read that unnecessary things. Uh, yeah, I think it's been an amazing book, and there's probably also other uh, book summaries on the same book, which are gonna provide you with different information which is also one of the reasons why it is very, 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 very useful to go through different summaries, uh, longer summaries as well. Um, and yeah, so that it can also tell, well, you know, at, at some point, one can really tell what a good summary is and what a bad one is. A good summary is like, well, it also depends on what you're, see on, 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 on what you're seeking and what you're searching for. Of course, there's going to be some, some more detailed summaries which actually give you the information from the chapters. And then there's going to be some, some, some summaries that are really short, 
and just give you some sort of idea what the book is all about, you know, which is very good for all those people that are that are thinking about buying a book, but are not really quite sure whether it is something for them or not. But yeah, I'm going to end the episode there. I hope that I've been able to share something of importance, something that is good, something that you can use in your life. I guess I have, and I, I've really enjoyed it. So hopefully I'll see you next time, and bye-bye. I wish you the best. Please take care of yourself and your family members and all of your loved ones. Bye-bye.